Welcome everybody to the fourth episode of our program, Advertising Europe, and I'm very happy to share this program as the new president of the EACA. The theme of the program today will be dedicated to talent. Our industry, as you know, is rather simple. It's made of talent, which together create a culture and create communication for brands. With strong talent, our industry can have an impact on the brands, can have an impact on the behavior of the consumers and the citizens. Together, our talent can make the world a better place. But in the same time, it is difficult today to attract and to retain talent. Of course, there are some creative alternatives to our industry. Of course, the tech companies are very powerful. Of course, the pandemic has fundamentally changed the way people see work and see workplace. And we are an industry where workplace is essential to interact, to co-create, to co-invent. And we are living through a very difficult inflation period where all of the companies have to raise salaries in this very competitive context to attract the talent. It's a very important topic that we keep and of course, we keep attracting the best talent. And to discuss that today, we have uh, two uh, very interesting speakers. First of all, uh, I'm glad to have with us Paul Springer. Paul Springer is uh, the founder and the boss of uh, Edcom. Edcom is a network, and I'm sure Paul will explain that in detail, of uh, academies and universities who are all involved in uh, commercial communication. And it will reveal to us a very important pan-European study on talent, their drivers and the obstacles. And we also have the chance to have with us Doris Danner. Doris is a vice president of TBWA. She's also uh, sharing at the moment uh, one of our uh, key elements of the ACA, the IAC. And Doris will share with us what's the agency perspective on the talent. So without further sharing, Paul, uh, I'm handing over to you to reveal to us uh, what is in this uh, fascinating piece of research on the talent. This was a survey um, that we initially put together earlier this year, and, and it went across to 200 advertising students through um, EDCOM, the European Association of Commercial Communications Education, Effectively, we're, we're 40, 45 to 50 members around Europe that all specialize in advertising, marketing, PR, related commercial communication activities. And uh, the, response, the responses went through France, um, Italy, Romania, Croatia, Belgium. We had a really good broad response rate, um, of which 40, nearly 41 percent were enrolled on four year degree courses. And we included master students in this as well. Alongside this, we ran a parallel set of questions to 200 recruiters right across Europe through uh, the ACA, both direct and indirect members uh, of the organization. So we were able to get SMEs, we were able to get larger organizations, multinationals as well. So we had quite a broad demographic. Of the students, um, we asked a number of questions about their experiences of the course. So what we're trying to get is their, their perception of, of what made them choose to study commercial communications, advertising, marketing in the first place. What had informed them on their journey on the courses? And did they still want to go into commercial communications when they graduated? One of the things we learned was that 40 percent of the students um, have either completed an internship during their study uh, in creative media or, or digital agency. So they'd had some firsthand experience of what the work environment would be like upon graduation. And 76% uh, had had talks, they had uh, speakers coming in to give them a context of, of what the workspace would be like. And that's kind of interesting. When we wrote down some of the feedback there, um, one, it gave a snapshot of what advertising communications was like now. And in some cases, it both inspired and made very clear exactly the areas of communication they did not want to graduate to. So it seemed to put people off as much as it inspired people. It was, it was quite polarized in, in the responses uh, to 
um, having speakers coming in, but all courses in communications appear to have speakers coming in. 69% um, have considered alternative career paths, mostly using the skill sets that they've got, but not necessarily indirectly to marketing, advertising, PR. Um, nearly 47% of students said that their career plan had changed since they started their degree. And just over 22% of the students said they are, are now not seeking a career in a creative media or digital agency. There had been some changes. There were some um, immediate uh, differences where we asked recruiters and we asked the students what they believed recruiters want. We asked, um, we asked recruiters what they thought students wanted. Presentation skills seemed to be high in their list where when we asked the students what they thought recruited, what recruiters wanted, strategy seemed to be much higher in their list. That was one of the, the main uh, big differences earlier on. The role of copywriting seemed to be significant in all of this as well. Um, whether employers wanted a traditional craft, people that could write straightforwardly in a way that communicated, where um, graduates were thinking actually they were, they were multi, both multilingual, and they also had another form of shorthand in emojis and, and uh, other forms of social media communication they thought the employers didn't have. But that idea of copy, where copy fitted and what skill sets they brought to employers that they didn't already have becomes a recurring theme in a lot of the data we were looking at. Working remotely seemed to have a big impact, certainly on the current round of graduates. A lot more students um, going through courses had to work remotely. A lot of times they were lurking during lectures, they had the camera off, they didn't want people to see their bedrooms understandably, um, but they started to form different behaviours. So on one hand, we, we've got working remotely, being able to manage your own time. On another level, we're talking about teamwork and fitting in. And those social skills haven't been honed in the same way in the last two, two or so years, in the way they would have been on degree courses. Colloquia, they're not sitting there, you don't see the body language in quite the same way. So they've learned different skills on presenting online. They've learned to use more media. But in many cases, the idea of working in a team was also slightly terrifying, um, where employers, I think, were often assuming there weren't too many differences. They needed the talent skill set for now. A lot of the uh, talent was looking at how they could grow in the workplace. So, but issues as well of motivations, the motivational factors. Um, is their primary motivation wanting money, wanting disposable income? when actually a lot of the time we discovered it was about their value sets and developing a curriculum vitae, developing a, a, a career that spoke to their values. And I think that was one of the bigger differences that started to emerge. Recruiters believe graduates are switching industries for better pay, when actually graduates are not as motivated by their pay, more by the type of job it, it, it is and how that matched their values. But issues of well-being, teamwork, the brands that they'd be working on and, and the idea of authenticity, they were picky. And I think um, when we were consulting around the questions, um, one, of the, one of the things that came up is, well, in an agency, you might work on tobacco advertising. You might work on other things that might not be so eco-friendly. How do you feel about that? And that seemed to matter more to graduates uh, in, in working on brands that they themselves identify with and thought they could authentically contribute to rather than the broad idea of selling something because it was a big brand and they had to they had to really sell it because that's what the company needed them to do. Issues of work-life balance, issues of pressure started to crop up now, now. Now we hear about that in the workplace, but this is graduates going into the workplace, already looking at, at what type of place it is. And the idea of pressure um, became a theme that emerged in work-life balance. Working under pressure, they said, was no longer glorified. And a lot of the speakers that came in were talking about uh, the pressure that you're on and how great that was to have big uh, deadlines and achieve for those deadlines. That put a lot of potential graduates into advertising off. They thought, well, what about my mental health in that case? Um, that's obviously been flagged up within universities. We're having to pay more attention to it. They're worried that when they graduate to a pressurized workplace with hard deadlines, that's not going to continue. So the idea of a stressful environment is one of the themes that seems to be why they were looking uh, for other outlets for their skills. Um, there are some skills which are simultaneously considered over and underrated. Teamwork, creativity, working under pressure, I thought was quite interesting, because that was definitely a mismatch between what employees expected graduates to thrive on and what the graduates were actually saying. Some students believe that the ability to speak multiple languages is not taken seriously enough in all of this. None of the adverts they saw for roles talked about the use of language, um, not just being able to speak different languages, but also colloquially 
understanding the different cultures and certainly a, a, an advantage of European students that they can speak different languages. And the placement experience um, clearly was something that recruiters valued highly. Um, however, they seem um, to oversee the fact that youngsters are still keen on learning in the workplace. Um, obviously, when people are recruiting, they want those skills now to hit a role that they need in an urgent function rather than how they might go on to, uh, to graduate and, and work further. This is the last of the, of the big three themes, the Generation Z. Um, Euros, um, income was not their primary consideration. This is probably one of the most poignant quotes. Uh, before, I, before I wanted to have a big career, now I want to have a big impact. They're looking at what their, their grandson life's going to amount to when they graduate and how their career is going to start to tell their story and their values matching their career rather than chasing um, the books. We're working on the white paper to get uh, to drill down. We're still going through the data now, but those are the key points we've got to at the moment. But um, there are clearly some tensions and some differences in employers' expectations of graduates now and where graduates are, be it shaped by their worldviews, be it shaped by the pandemic, be it shaped by the changing nature of work. Um, they certainly, to be, certainly seem to be pretty poignant uh, right now. Thank you, Paul. I think it was super, super exciting. Um, if I may, may I ask a question? Um, actually, two questions. I think one of my questions would be from, from your uh, research and um, the interviews we made. Do you think students now understand what it means to work in our industry, in communication, in creative agencies? Are they aware of what they actually do or have I, to do? I think they're aware of the challenges uh, um, as highlighted by a lot of guest speakers and their placements would have given them a better snapshot rather than the longer view. What happens when you, when you need to change client? What happens when you have to switch account, work on something different? None of that seemed to really come through. Um, mm -hmm. What did come through were all the things that were expected of them. And they were, they seem to be very concerned. And I think, they, I think there was, there's more self doubt now about whether they can meet the things that they're not aware of. Mostly because they haven't had the chance to go around agencies. Even when, uh, I speak for my university too, when we've had guest speakers in, oftentimes they're streaming in like this from their own houses. Um, they're not seeing the workplace. They're not seeing how things were before. They're not sure if the workplace is exactly as it looked pre-pandemic. Um, and we've got a lot more blended working now. So I think the uncertainty makes it slightly scarier because the workplace is unclear um, and it's still taking shape post COVID. I mean, one of the things that we've discovered is that working remotely through the pandemic has been a catalyst to make more of Teams, of Zoom and other formats and different agencies are relying on those in different, what, different scales where the expectancy of when you're in um, and the cost of going to work now um, is certainly a challenge. So I think all those things are coming to play and that amounts to a lot of anxiety, I think more than anything else. Yeah. So. I agree. And I, I think, you know, uh, the other thing which, which came out of the study is that money is not the first driver maybe to join a, a company or an agency. Um, but what I think a real driver is the value someone can create or the change someone can create for a certain brand or in the universe, if you want to say, in, in joining our industry. And I think this is where we need to get better to, uh, to you know, when we have our interviews to let our people know this is um, actually where we want you um, to create innovation with us and to have a change in the industry or for a certain brand. I, I think a lot of the passion from the presenters when they've spoken to students has been about the process, how you work in a team, how you yeah. hit a deadline. Um, that's the scary bit. And I don't think much has been on the outcome, the so what bit at the very end. What impact do you make? Um, and you're right, the values that you're contributing. Um, and a lot of advertising work now is looking at the, 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 the bigger social impact that brands are making. And that's where they identify readily with. It's the mechanism to getting there, I think. There's, there's on, that of topic, that. on that topic, uh, and to jump on what Doris was saying, uh, you actually showed us a quote about advertising and marketing communication in general is often perceived as something paid by global corporations and brands, which only goal is to make a profit, which obviously is exactly what we don't want to be because we want to make the world a better place. We want to impact uh, the way brands talk about the future and change the behaviors of the consumer. 
how representative is that quote uh, in the overall survey you have conducted? Because you extract one quote, but is it like a trend? Is it something dominant or is it just a quote? We put that one in because it seemed to be surprisingly symptomatic of advertising students right across the piece, be it um, in newer advertising economies, um, Romania and others, or be it in the rather the later, the France, the, from France um, and from Belgium and others, there seemed to be that consistent view. Um, whether graduates now um, through social media are developing a, a, a shared ethos about the role of, of corporates and the role of advertising in all of this. Um, it's hard to discern, but there seemed to be a strange consistency of view. And that's the bit, and that, that, that was happened to be one of the quotes, effectively like the, you know, I came into this because I, I, I thought I could uh, make money, now I want to make a difference. That, that was a beautifully succinct uh, quote that a lot, of, a lot of others had said in different longer form ways, um, but, but, but similarly... But the same line. But similarly, the perception of, of advertising. Um, I think the alchemy of learning the techniques of advertising and communication and getting people to, to buy in and value ideas is seen to be potentially good if used for good. And that then yeah. brings into so question like, what, yeah. what, what brands you're working on, what clients you're working Make, on, what sector. Yeah. Um, Making an impact for good or for yeah. the better. Yeah. But everybody wants Any to work other, on those campaigns. What about the others? Any other question, Doris, to Paula? No, I, I, I'm not sure if this came out of the study, but one, one other question I would have is um, if um, what was the key driver of them leaving advertising or what they think would be the key driver leaving advertising? I, I, th I think you had some quotes, but um, maybe you can elaborate a bit on that from your findings. Yes, um, I think there's an awareness now. A, a lot more students uh, are not doing the traditional books where you have, um, looking around the room here, a series of scamps and, and, and big ideas extrapolated to traditional media. They're looking at iterative campaigns. They're looking at how they tie into social and other values. And I think when they're going on that learning journey, they're also starting to hit on other companies that would value the skill sets of communications. And I, I think they're starting to discover as, they, as they're learning through doing that there are other potential careers that use the same skills but apply them in different ways. And I think, I think that's part of it. it it's, it's kind of odd that a lot of, I think one of the presumptions we went in, into this with and wasn't so much change, but a, a lot of them were very keen on working for search and social companies. Well, talking about morality and, <laughs> and, and, and values and, and communications, there's probably more question marks now um, on a daily basis, you hear all about about, about politics and manipulation of, of, of social uh, chat channels and others. Um, that, that that's sort of called into question. But I think that they're, they're very much enthralled by the potential of technology and those companies that are exploring what it can do, uh, and they feel like they're growing alongside the technology. Um, where I don't think they're always clear on the fact that. The bigger agency is also like a technological challenge in, in, in their approaches to briefs. And it might well be that there's an awful lot of published material in the libraries on what agencies used to do with the same name, not so much on what they're doing now. So, so whether they're clipping into the medium, actually getting the current case studies, this is where the epics come into its own, because they do show how um, a big idea might uh, transcend lots of different media and go on a learning journey with the customers in real time. Um, all, all of that comes into play, but it's much easier to communicate that when you're a, a smaller NGO, when you're when you're championing a cause that a student can can latch onto. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. I think uh, this study will be available soon. The white paper will be, uh, I understand, available soon. We've heard the point of view of the recruiters. We've heard the point of view of the students. Uh, it's interesting now to hear Doris and to have the point of view of the agency industry. Uh, what do you do about uh, this big talent challenge uh, which we are all uh, facing currently? Well, I think, you know, our industry, as I see, is, is built on talent and innovation, you know, and, um, and we really have to do everything to find talent, to keep talent, to grow talent, uh, and um, to make talent happy to work with us in the workplace. And I think now with the pandemic, and it also came out in the study, uh, we also have to find a way of um, uh, having a work, work and home balance, 
because um, we need to see if people want to come back fully. So we need to actually accept them keeping work from home for a little bit. Um, I think it depends also on market by market what you do, because there are, there are agencies where people actually would love to get back to the office five times a, a week, but there are other markets where they don't. So I think it depends on our HR and, um, and the CEOs in each, each market to find the perfect balance for all of our employees. Um, what I also think is that um, there is no... Um, it's not the same fit for all, yeah? So each talent is different. Each employee has different needs. And I think all of us need to um, sit together and to find the best possible way to make uh, our employees happy and um, give them the tools they need to uh, bring the best out of them. Uh, creativity, innovation, teamwork, and um, Hopefully, we are successful in keeping the talents and bringing more and more young people to our industry to create change, uh, to build the values um, they want to see in 30, 40 years from now. I think this will be um, our job in the industry, and I think we are very well placed to deliver that to them. There was a, there's a big topic currently, uh, which is inflation. There was an article in, uh, in uh, the FT, sorry, uh, recently about how agencies cope with the inflation. Maybe you read it. Uh, say yes. the big uh, holding companies are increasing their compensation uh, ratio by two, three, uh, four points. And we know every uh, holding company has uh, that uh, metric uh, under metric under very uh, tight control. Do you think it's a trend that will continue over the next year or so? Or do you think things will calm down as far as you know, coping with inflation, raising salaries, to keep attracting the best? Or do you think dominant trend? I think nobody knows what will happen, you know, today. So nobody even knows what will happen on Monday. But I think, yes, I think we need to be prepared that inflation will at least be on a level of 10, 15%. I'm talking about Central Europe, not Turkey for the moment, yeah. So I think um, even we suffer in, 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 in Europe, in the middle of Europe with high inflation. And I think we, it will grow. And um, I think what we need to consider is that um, we might have a lot of people who love advertising, but might want to change the job because they will get paid 20, 30% more in another job. So we need to be prepared for that. But also what I think we need to um, talk to our clients because um, it's a vicious circle. If we keep on raising salaries, we also need to take um, the clients uh, to the table and we need to increase the fees because otherwise, you know, um, we lose all our margin. So I think this is something we are all in the industry. It's not only the agencies, uh, it's the clients as well. So to retain the best client is also in the interest of a client. So there has to be a certain fee increase attached um, if you want to work with uh, the best talent. Otherwise, both of us lose them. One thing that strikes me is in our industry, we are still very much organized by discipline. Advertising, yes. PR, corporate communication, digital, media. And even in media, we know there are many different silos. If you compare with the tech industry, uh, if you join uh, Facebook, you're probably joining uh, a company that enables you to connect with your friends. Uh, if you join Google, a company that enables you to have access to information. So the big purpose. Uh, do you think people realize when they join our industry, the scope of services, the potential it carries, or it's not the case, and it's also one of the reasons people find alternatives to advertise? I agree. I think, I think, first of all, we need to maybe get better, you know, to, to show what we actually do and uh, how you can grow in our industry and, and what is your task. And I think... What would also be necessary is when you have young people joining that they maybe have a mentor or someone, you know, you just don't put them on the table and say, this is what you need to do. So write the copy, but you need to grow them slowly. Also, when it comes to what is their job, what is the expectation? Um, what, what do they actually um, need to learn? You know, what do we need to teach them? I think um, this is what we need to do for them. Um, and um, if I look back at myself, when I started in advertising way back, um, I was luckily to have someone who took me by the hand and we grew together. Um, but I think um, we really need to get better with that as well. Paul, do you have any questions for Doris? 
for the industry. Uh, I, I think I think I think Doris um, identified two absolutely key issues that came up through the survey. Um, one is about the transition to the workplace and it being a slightly scary place in the way that it wasn't before because it's changing. And the idea of a mentor, I think, is absolutely crucial if you help me to smooth over and help people to find their feet. The other is to do with culture and growth and the, 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 I mean, meta and some of the places that you mentioned, the Facebooks, the Instas and the others, offer a culture um, and a, a chance to meet others and the lifestyle that goes with it. They might all go out together, they might socialize together. It's not about paying them the most, it's about giving them a, a work life experience that they can, they can then feel like they belong. Um, so I think, I think the idea of work culture is a big thing and growth. The one great thing about an advertising agency that you wouldn't get in, in any of the others really is the fact that, especially if it's a bigger company, you can move between countries, you can, you, through, the, through that group, you can really grow in different ways. And when you develop one strand of interest, you might have an opportunity to go and do something different and grow another strand. But you can do all that within a big company. That doesn't really get identified. Often it's seen yeah. as being working, working for a big devil to springboard to something that might match your ethics or whatever. Um, and it doesn't have to be that at all. But that often that's learned when students graduate to workplace and they realize the potential then. I think if that's part of the initial offer, part of the, the initial outlay of, of what they're graduating to, what working for a bigger company can, can mean, I think that, yeah. that would entice far more. I think exactly we need to we need to build a growth path for each and everyone who's joining the industry. And um, I remember I had a discussion with a young copywriter once said, hey, you know, if you stay with us, you're really good, you can really grow. And, and he said, well, will I then write the copy for a bigger client? I said, no, not really. But, you know, I think this is exactly what we need to do. We need to show them the way, you know, what's the next step? You know, you you're a copywriter now, but you will learn creative strategy. You will learn about social media, you will learn this and that, and then, you know, sooner or later, uh, your path might end up as an executive creative director or even as a CEO. So, but I think as a young student, you, everything is blurred when you, when you join and um, we need to help them. I think, I think those, those sort of labels, uh, whether it's a director, creative director, executive creative director, matter less as benchmarks than the fluid experiences that they're going through and the people they meet on the journey, what some insights that they learn when they're working with clients or analyzing, it could be any brand, it could be toilet rolls. And suddenly you might start to identify things in it that think, actually, wow, I didn't know that before. And then they're going on a learning journey. That I think is the real, the real bit that will hook that the graduates in. It's, it's about learning and growing and developing and, and growing self in the job rather than achieving particular marks and titles. And I think that's, one, that's a generational shift and a difference, yes. I think. Exactly. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Doris. I think, you know, we had a good uh, overview of uh, the war that is in place, the talent war. I get the feeling that, you know, there's some work to do, but that there is also huge opportunities ahead. Uh, I think this study provides very interesting learnings as to what the drivers are, as to what the obstacles uh, are also. Uh, and I think, you know, we have in our in ourselves, with our own talent and with our own culture and with innovation. I take uh, the point of Doris, I think she's very, you're very right. Innovation is key to, uh, to growth and is key to our business. I think we have uh, you know, the assets to attract better and uh, stronger talent and to retain them because by the breadth of what we actually provide as services, we can make them uh, experience, as you mentioned, Paul, uh, so many different aspects of our industry and uh, nourish, you know, and grow in our um, uh, in our space. So I think that's the end of our fourth session uh, dedicated to talent. Uh, I uh, welcome you very soon for our fifth one, uh, without revealing yet what the subject will be about. Thank you very much. <laughs>